Yeah, what is post-structuralism? So post-structuralism is in response to ways of approaching knowledge and ways of making knowledge that were set out during enlightenment thinking. What it's really trying to do is to critique the ways that we access knowledge and the ways that we make knowledge. And it's a really, really complex theory because it is in itself critiquing what is theory and how do we come to have theory. So post-structuralism's main goal in feminist discourse is to interrogate the ideas that we already have about is something absolute, like can can there really be a singular truth and post-structuralism would largely say no, there is no such thing as an absolute or singular truth. So a really good example of of this idea to make it more accessible would be the sex versus gender debate, which is a very essential component of feminist studies. It's one of the things that you're gonna learn in like Jarosh J 101. It's one of the first things that I was taught in the program. And it's basically like for a very long time, like sex and gender were conflated with each other. And so one of feminism's first arguments that brought them to the forefront was like, well, no, like sex and gender are two separate things. And gender is a construct that is applied on top of one's biological material being their sex. And post-structuralist feminism is now kind of coming up with this counter argument to this, well no, like not only is gender a construct that is completely dependent upon one's geography, culture, their society, but also is one's sex a factor of your subjectivity that is identified for you by external sources. One of the really good examples of how post-structuralism is interrogating everything that we've taken, like biology and the biology of sex as being like, well, that is that and that's it. And it's an absolute truth and interrogating absolute truths and saying, no, because you can look at something as, you know, apparently fundamental as biology and still say, actually, this is equally as constructed as something like gender as we've already proven it to be. Yeah, exactly. Like I was trying to explain this to my roommate the other night about like, you know, intersex or whatever. Yeah, that's that. a really complicated topic that exactly. is like a huge thing in post-structuralist theorizing because it is one of the things that very fundamentally is like, well, no, there there are no binaries here. And that's that's a huge proponent of enlightenment thinking that post-structuralism tries to counter is binary thinking of being like, well, there's us and then there's them or there's one and then there's not like one. Post-structuralism is basically not only interrogating those two ideas and the two sides of the binary, but also the gray area in between them. And most importantly, is looking at what are the social forces or what are the forces in our knowledge-making practices, especially in our school systems, that create binaries and how can we abstain from reproducing them in the way that we talk about knowledge. Another huge component is that language is very much like what creates social, social subjects and that we have to be very, very careful of the language that we're using. It's just like a lot of people, they use always or never in the way that they talk, constructing this idea that it's totally. always this or it's never that, it's um, this against that, it's us against them, it's all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, and so like, I mean like binaries are their own kind of like sub-topic that like, it, it, you know, that's like there's so much research behind that and post-structuralism is really like I think the step after that, like acknowledging that those binaries are there, is trying to like, you know, basically deconstruct them and disassemble them and find ways to basically open up the ideas or the, you know, the possibilities of new ideas and new ways of observing the world and accepting various positionalities. What are some ways in which we can try to uh, put in place a more post-structuralist thinking and just society in general like what are some things to change in the education system or even even in sports for example I think Absolutely. sports probably play a large part in totally. structuralist thinking yeah I'm not a huge like sports person in general but I can say like in terms of education like one of the most fundamental articles that I like reference when I talk about post structuralism like they open their article by saying it's really hard for us to talk about post-structuralism in the format of an article because we have to follow a very strict set of expectations of what an academic article that will hopefully be published in a journal has to look like. In post-structuralism, we're talking about how when you adhere to a certain format of learning or of producing knowledge, as in the case of that journal article, that you are inevitably going to leave pieces out of your argument or of your thought because you're, you're cramming an idea or a thought into a really strict structure. 
the education system does this repeatedly just in the fact that like all of our knowledge is accessed through text. We completely obscure oral histories and oral cultures, which are an insanely huge component of global history that are just completely like not included in the canon of what we accept as being like essential tenets of our history and our culture and our past, especially in Canada with a huge indigenous population where we have in Vancouver alone 30 plus languages, different indigenous languages that are not included like communities and those histories which are all you know happening in our and it exists and are preserved in their own language are not translated or like they're not there for us and part of part of the problem is that even in translating them we risk like disrupting their cultures in a way you know so it, it is problematic and you do have to find ways to walk that line without reproducing the kind of obscuration that you come in contact with so often in the education system, but post-structuralism really tries to find ways around that. And that is like a huge question. How could you like restructure the education system? Like that, it's a huge task. And I think that definitely like this kind of theory, like it shows way, it shows us what we're doing wrong. And now there are more, there are more than ever more theorists who are talking about what we can do to do this, you know, in a better way, in a more positive and inclusive way. Do you think that video would play a part in Oh, yeah, there are so many universities that are now um, publishing their lectures via YouTube and they're, they're there for free and they're accessible and if you can find the right software you can have those videos translated into like a myriad of different languages so that is a way of kind of like subverting the traditional expectations of like how do you acquire knowledge whereas now we have and I mean, of course, it does privilege people who are, you know, have access to a computer and have the time to like, yeah, absolutely, and the people who can, you know, record these lectures and can upload them and like, it, so, I mean, it is problematic on its own, but I mean, that is a way that we are in small steps moving toward a more accessible way of attaining education. What are some theorists you would recommend people to read in order to like, get introduced to post-structuralism? Um, so like always Judith Butler, she has some really really amazing things to say. Chris Whedon is an amazing um, feminist theorist and she has published numerous articles on this subject. Joan Scott would be another amazing author. Uh, those would probably be my top three. Okay. They're so good. Yeah.